All right, Logic fans, welcome to our second video on section 5.2, 5.2b, and we're just gonna continue looking at some examples. In particular, I wanna give you some examples of presenting tableau interpretations of sentences that have individual constants in them because we didn't see any of those in our previous examples. So uh, I'm not gonna tell you, I'm, I'm gonna ask you to just go ahead and, and give it a try, and if you don't get it, no big deal. This is, this is where you're gonna learn how to do it, but, um, I want you to give it a shot, you know, so um, let's just focus, for example, on the first sentence here, FA and not GC. Notice we've got individual constants involved now, okay? Can you provide a tableau interpretation that makes the sentence true? Can you also provide a tableau interpretation that makes the sentence false? And can you do that um, using three objects, okay, for both the true and the false interp tableau interpretations? Um, Pause now, give it a shot, and we'll come back and do it together, and I'll explain a little bit. Okay, hope you've had a chance to pause. Um, let's go ahead and do the answer. So um, in green here, I've got an interpretation in three objects that makes the first sentence true. In red here, I've got an interpretation in three objects that makes the same sentence false. Okay, so... Uh, let's go ahead and, and do a little bit of a deep dive here and see if we can't figure out what's going on. So first and foremost, this sentence is a conjunction. So going back to our truth tables, which again, you got to know like the back of your hand in order to do well in logic, okay? Um, both conjuncts have to be true. So that means A has to have the property F, which we have here, and C has to lack the property G. So notice I've introduced a second column to cover this right and i've got my domain with three objects and then i've got these two columns for my properties okay also notice that the little a i am sort of doing double duty here right so when you have individual constants in your sentence what you want to make sure you do is that those individual constants appear as objects in your domain okay um, and so, you know, this A is going to represent this one, and this C is going to be represented here, okay? And that's fine. And so, this is a conjunction. We've got A having the property F. We've got C lacking the property G. And therefore, uh, this interpretation is going to make this whole conjunction here in one true. And it doesn't matter how you fill the rest of these in. Fill the rest of these in however else you like. That's going to be an interpretation according to which this sentence is true. Okay, now let's look at the case that makes that same sentence false. All right, um, well, there's uh, several different options, but once again, it's a conjunction, so we need at least one of the conjuncts to be false. Okay, um, and so what we're going to do, or what I did, was I just made uh, the right conjunct false. Right, so in order to be true, C has to lack the property G, but I've got uh, C having the property G. The right conjunct is false, and therefore the entire conjunction is false. Fill in these others any old way you want. It will be an interpretation of this sentence according to which it is false. Okay, all right, uh, let's go ahead and try another. Go ahead and try to provide an interpretation. Again, let's use three objects as an example. Okay. Um, according to which this sentence is true and a three object interpretation tableau interpretation of this sentence according to which it is false pause now okay hopefully you've had a chance to pause and think on it but we're doing the second sentence here and um, I'm going to present it this way. So again, here's an interpretation in three objects that makes this sentence true. And here's an interpretation in three objects which makes this sentence false. Okay. And so um, a couple of things I had to change. So first of all, I've got the property constant J, but not G. So I switched out these for, uh, from G to J. Okay. Also, I've got this new constant D, so um, I needed to make sure that appeared somewhere in my three objects. So I, I replaced it with the with the C. Okay. So now I've got D accounted for. Okay. Let's look at the interpretation that makes this true. Three objects, right? Notice the main connective is or. So in order for it to be true, I need only one, at least one, of the two disjuncts to be true easiest thing to do in this case is to make D have the property J, which I did here, and fill in the others any old way you want, right? So multiple possible solutions are, are available here. 
fill in the others however you want, this will result in an interpretation that makes this sentence true. Okay? Now, uh, let's look at the false case. Um, so, in order to make this sentence false, I've uh, got you sort of started here is what I wanted to do. So, um, again, we've got this main connective, and in order to make it false, I need to ensure that both disjuncts are false. So I made D lack the property J, so this disjunct turns out to be false. Okay, so far so good. What remains to be done? Right, so if you had trouble figuring this out, you can pause now and try to figure out what do you have to do to make this sentence false? Okay. All right, hopefully that hint helped you out if you were struggling a little bit. But in order to make it false that everything is F, we just need at least one of these to be false. So, for example, that would do it. And fill in the rest any old way you like, and uh, this sentence will turn out to be false, right? You don't have to fill in all of these as false because, well, you could do that, and it wouldn't harm anything. You just need at least one. It says everything is, 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 is such that it's F, but as long as uh, at least one of these things lack F, it's going to be false that everything is F, right? So this is a really nice way, I hope you're digging it, of, of modeling um, sentences and interpreting them as true or false. Okay, so let's practice and let's ramp up complexity a little bit, look at some more sophisticated sentences and how our Tableau interpretations can handle them. So here I, have, of course, have, um, um, for good practice, the four categorical sentences, A, E, I, and O. We're going to provide an interpretation in three objects that makes each of these true and each of these false. So let's go ahead and start with the categorical A sentence. Can you provide me with an interpretation in three objects that makes the categorical A sentence true, and can you provide me with an interpretation in three objects that makes the categorical A sentence false? Pause now. Okay, so here's a quick hint, right? For the true one, right, you're going to have to have three objects, and you're going to have the only two property constants to worry about are F and G. There's no uh, individual constants to worry about. So uh, there's your setup if you needed that hint. Uh, provide me with an interpretation that makes it true and an interpretation that makes it uh, the same sentence, the categorical A sentence, false. Pause now. Okay, so uh, as always, there's multiple different solutions that are possible here, but one thing you could do is you could make everything in the domain lack the property F. Okay, and that will suffice to make the categorical A sentence true, right? Why? Well, let's think about this for a second. The categorical A sentence says, pick anything you like out of your domain, Psst, A, B, or C. Okay, pick any old thing you like out of Santa's bag there, A, B, or C. Whichever thing you picked out, it's guaranteed to satisfy the following description. If it's F, then it's G. So A has to satisfy this description. So A has to be such that if A is F, then A is G. B has to satisfy this description. So B has to be such that if it if B is F, then B is G. Similarly, C has to satisfy it. So C has to be such that if it's F, then it's G. But notice, if A lacks the property F and B lacks the property F and C lacks the property F, right? So let's just take, like, as an example here, okay? Let, let, let's just take, uh, for example, this sentence. Ima imagine this sentence. Maybe this way of thinking about it will help, okay? Um, since A lacks the property F, this here antecedent turns out to be false. Well, by our truth tables for a conditional, if you have a false antecedent, you've got a true conditional. Similarly, if I had put B here in both places, or if I had put C here in both places, okay? So by lacking, okay, the property F, everything is such that if it's F, then it's G right? So this would be one way of making the categorical A sentence true with three objects. There's other ways, right? You could have made sure that all of the, um, uh, the consequent was true, true consequent, true conditional, right? So um, really have those truth tables down, but yeah, fill this in any old way you like, and you get a true statement. Now, let's think about the false case a little bit here. Okay, so the false case is interesting, right? So we've got to make it false that everything is such that if it's F, then it's G. 
that means that there's at least one thing in the bag, A, B, or C, such that it's not true. It does not satisfy the description. If it's F, then it's G. So, for example, we're going to need something like this, right? We're going to need something that's sort of, uh, here, I'll, I'll write it this way. We're going to need something that has the property F and lacks the property G. So we're going to need, like, I'll indicate that with a minus here and a, and a plus here. We need something like that, right? Because um, the only way for a conditional to be false is if it has a true antecedent and a false consequent. And so we need in order for it to be false that everything satisfies this description we need at least one thing that is not i chose the object c you could have done multiple of them or you could have just done just object a or just object b but as long as you have at least one like this that's going to suffice to make the categorical a sentence false okay so um, that's the categorical a sentence pause now provide me with an interpretation tableau interpretation in three objects that makes the categorical E sentence true and a tableau interpretation in three objects that makes the categorical E sentence false. Pause now. Okay, and hopefully you're finding this, you know, that this is a much more streamlined process than the sort of case where what you're doing is um, trying to come up with from scratch, as in 5.1, an interpretation on the fly every time, okay? But what you've got here is uh, no f is g. So uh, to make that true, right, all we have to do is ensure a false antecedent for the objects, for all the objects in our domain. And once again, just like in example one, that's going to ensure a true conditional for all three objects, and therefore the all three are this way statement is going to be true okay so um for the uh for the case of the false interpretation an interpretation that makes the categorical e statement false in three objects what we're going to do is we're going to need at least one of our objects to have f and also have g right so uh, let's just think about it this way for a second um so if we have a sentence like this just as an example okay we need this part to be true and we need this part to be false, right? So we need at least one thing in the domain uh, according to which, you know, this happens. You got a true antecedent and a false consequent, okay? So uh, to do that, I just said, okay, I'm going to take the object A. I'm going to make it have the property F, thereby giving me a true antecedent. Now, to make it false that A lacks G, I made A have G, okay? So, um that's that, that that's that's the basic technique there so now this conditional turns out to be false on this interpretation and since um the statement is saying we need that conditional to be true for everything in the domain uh this is an interpretation that makes this categorical e statement false okay and after you've seen these you'll pick up a lot of facility with it right again this says pick anything out of the domain it's guaranteed to satisfy this description. That thing you picked out, suppose it was A, is guaranteed to satisfy this description. So I made A not satisfy that description, thereby ensuring that the statement everything in the domain satisfies that description uh, turn out to be false as desired. Okay, okay. We're running low on time, and I don't want to rush our, our discussion of the I and the O cases, so we'll spill that onto the next video, uh, 5.2C. See you there.